Hey, welcome back. We are animating today. So yeah, um, I'll kind of show on the screen the concept art that I did for this pig character uh, in my game. And basically, I'm just kind of quickly going over the concept art and tracing. Uh, you don't have to trace. Um, I just do it to save time. I also added the mirror modifier and um, let me know if you guys want to do, see a video on that if I haven't done already. But basically it just acts as symmetry uh, on each one of the lines. And when I do that, I don't have to draw twice. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. I'm just kind of um, doing the keyframes and basically with this uh, pig, I'm just doing an idle animation for a game and I kind of want him to be kind of goofy. Uh, you know, and I think when you're animating, you kind of want to have an idea of how you want the character, what their personality is going to be like. Um, and when you when you understand their personality or have an idea of their personality, it makes animating a lot easier. So in my head, I thought that this pig would be like kind of like a communist, uh, joyful pig that is really greedy. So I know it sounds like kind of crazy, but the lore for him is actually still getting built out. He's a mayor in the game and um, just trying to make him look uh, basically like he's super greedy. And so when I'm anim animating him, I'm thinking about making him basically pop like a balloon. So when he's breathing, he's just like, it's like you're sque one of those squeeze toys, you know, like where the eyes pop out. So that's how I was thinking about it when he was breathing, that he's just like so fat and so full that he's like seconds away from burst bursting. So yeah, I'm just basically going back and forth between the keyframes and just looking at each individual um, frame. And I'm using the sculpt tool. The sculpt tool is like really powerful to not have to redraw a lot of the um, frames. So I'm doing that and then I'm just edit, jumping into edit mode and just kind of moving around the points. This is just really rough. You'll see later um, that I'll come back and, and smooth everything out, but don't get so hung up on having it perfect the first time. Um, I'm notorious for hating sketching, like as far as like just taking the time to sketch. Um, so I just like to jump right into the line, line work or line art and I started, you know, using uh, concept drawing and the concept drawing does help me a lot. You know, don't be afraid to use like reference photos um, when it comes to like other animations. I would say when it comes to like reference, just use the real life version and then just kind of exaggerate that. And uh, because whenever I used to do reference photos, one of my drawbacks was I would reference uh, other people's art and I would have a tendency to copy it. And so it just didn't really make it look super original. Um, so my advice is just reference real life things and then extrapolate from there. Um, really limit yourself on the style referencing. You know, look at it, but don't stare at it because if you're anything like me, um, I have a tendency to mimic shot for shot the style and i think in total i had three or four actual frames that i i drew um, but i just wanted to make sure that his fatness was like shown so i'm kind of going in and individually looking at each element like his eyeballs his nose his stomach his arms his hat and it's like how can i make this like come to life and so when you're animating, just kind of make sure that you're taking the time to like look at each stroke, look at each body part, and then just really like try to make it match the character. And so as you can see, like when I'm animating him, I'm really thinking of kind of an older style cartoon, like Mickey Mouse. Um, I didn't have the time to do like a full like dance, you know, where they, the older cartoons, they like dance, um, but I just want to kind of make it look jovial and, uh, you know, exciting. But this is only three frames. That's what's crazy. This is only three keyframes, and I just interpolate the sequence um, in between 
and I have a video for that if y'all want to check that out. Um, it saves a lot of time. You just draw the keyframes, and as long as you don't make a new stroke, you can cleanly um, have the, the in-between frames generated for you. And so that saved a lot of time for me. Uh, don't make the mistake of jumping right into color. Don't make the mistake of, you know, jumping into a lot of shading and all this other stuff. Because what's going to happen is later down the line, you're going to be like, wow, I wish I would have animated his arm better or faster or, you know, the timing's off or something. Then you have to go back and go through each layer and just fix it. And it's just a headache. So just get that first base layer of the line work uh, good and then everything else is okay and I save a lot of time using layers in grease pencil uh, I just use layers and then just move them around and uh, control D to duplicate the keyframes and then I'll just use the up and down arrows to quickly jump between keyframes and just play around with the timing until it's something that I like also I just discovered the fill tool and let me tell you, I might have to make a video on like how to use it because it, it kind of threw me off with the lines, the tangent lines that you see, those blue turquoise tangent lines. Um, but that's a totally different thing because they it was a headache at first, but then once I figured it out and realized I'm not as dumb as I think, uh, everything else. And another thing that's cool is Blender, you know, using the materials, you can change the color palette later and you'll see that I ultimately do change the color palette to match more of a cozy um, vibe because uh, the game that I'm, I'm, I'm currently making is a more cozy uh, style. Like I said, like don't stress out about it too much and everyone has a different workflow. Uh, but this is exactly what I'm talking about where I say like, you know, start simple and then add details later. Like if, if you get to the end of this and you say like, wow, like I have a lot of energy, um, to be honest, that's just what it is. Is like animating is just like patience and energy. So if you get to the end of it and you say, hey, I have a lot of energy and you're in creative control uh, and you wanna add more detail, then why not? You know, like just, if you, if you can afford it time-wise, go ahead and, and add. So it, it'll export all of this in uh, uh, images. And so I'm taking those and I'm just kind of using a photo editing program and I'm just kind of lighting them up to make sure that it's a sprite sheet ready. Yeah, so here's the final image. Pretty cute. Uh, I'd already drawn a background for him, just a test background. Um, and so, yeah, this is kind of like the area and where he's going to stay until the player walks up to talk to him. And yeah, so let me get, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you like this process, if you like me talking about my process. Um, you know, like this video if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, you know, dislike it. And then obviously comment um, and just kind of let me know your thoughts. And if you want to see more stuff like this or if you have an idea for another video. And I hope to see you all in the next video. And subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out a lot for people who are learning Grease Pencil. Um, so to know that you know there's a community and there's people that um, want to see you know Grease Pencil succeed um, in animation in general. So yeah, I hope this helped your game and I hope this helped you. And have a great day. Bye.